I don't want to go into complete detail about resolution because we've already done that once when we saw these slides during the creating files lecture. But I do want to remind you of the importance of resolution and redefine that because it's also covered in this chapter in your textbook. And so resolution is defined as the pixels per square inch in an image and it's sometimes referred to as PPI and sometimes it's referred to as DPI for the purposes of this class. You can kind of use them interchangeably, but you should get to know that PPI stands for pixels per inch and DPI stands for dots per inch. Pixels per inch refers to digital images, and you would generally use them for images that you're viewing on a computer or images that are destined to be viewed on a display device. Dots per inch, they translate equally. So if you have a 300 PPI image, you could easily have a 300 DPI image. But it stands for dots per inch, and when we print, we print with dots called halftones. They're called halftone dots. And DPI is the translation of PPI away from pixels and into dots. And so really the difference between PPI and DPI is PPI is referring to a digital image with a digital output, and DPI is describing an image that you are going to print in some way. And what you have to do is you have to convert it to little circles you can see in this illustration. And then um, just like pixels, when you zoom out from those little circles or little squares that are pixels, you get the illusion of the image that you're trying to create. And so in the top image here, it's a pixel-based image. If I zoom in, you see little squares. When I zoom out, it's this picture of these two people jumping for joy. And on the right-hand side, this is a printed image, and you can see that if you zoom in, you have little CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black circles. So when you zoom out, it creates the illusion that you have a photograph of um, the sky. Now the image of the sky is not zoomed out all the way. You can actually still see the pixels but if I was to zoom out further or make the image smaller on the screen eventually you wouldn't see those circles anymore and all you would see is an image that looks like clouds. There are two types of re uh, resolution that you need to be aware of for our class and we're going to break them into two categories web resolution and print resolution. To me web resolution is a little bit more straightforward we say that web resolution is 72 pixels per inch, and so if you're prepping an image for the web, you want to change the resolution to be 72 ppi. However, when you talk about web resolutions or resolutions for display devices, whether it's an iPad or a cell phone or a computer, we're generally more concerned with the number of pixels in the image than we are with the number of pixels per inch. Because when I display this image on a computer screen, it's going to take up a certain number of pixels across the width of that screen and a certain number of pixels across the height of that screen. And so if I describe an image as being 7 inches by 5 inches at 72 ppi, that doesn't really tell me a lot. As somebody who knows how to calculate how many pixels are in the image, I could use that to figure out how many pixels are in the image. But a better way to describe that image would be to say that the image is 504 pixels across and 360 pixels tall. So I was trying to, if I was trying to design something for the iPad, which is 1024 by 768, I could say that that image, 504 pixels across, is almost half of the width of the iPad. So if I used that on the iPad, it would take about up about half of the width of the iPad. And that's a better way to describe it than in terms of 7 by 5 at 72, because 7 by 5 at 72 is actually much bigger than an iPad. I think it is. I haven't measured the screen. But let's say it's bigger or the same size as the iPad. And so if I have this idea that it's going to take up the entire screen of the iPad, I would be incorrect because if I look at the number of pixels, knowing that the width of an iPad screen, uh, the first generation iPad screen, is 1024 pixels, if I place this image on it, it would only take up 504 pixels, which is about half of the width. File size is really important for web resolution and print resolution, but for web resolution it's important because we want to have the, the fastest load time. So we want to have the smallest file size possible without losing image quality. And so if you look at my example on the screen, if I change the resolution from 72 or anything higher, 150, 300, 900, the image looks exactly the same. And so when you're prepping the images, you want to downsample your images to be 72 ppi because you don't want any extra resolution because the more pixels you have, the higher your file size will be. While we're talking about file size, we could go lower than 72 ppi resolution for web images. But the lower you go, you're going to start seeing image quality loss. And so when you start to downsample your images beyond 72 and go to 60 or 45 or 30 like you're on the screen, you're going to see noticeable quality loss. 
And sometimes you might want to say, well, I'm okay with the way it looks at 60 ppi, and I would rather have a much smaller file size than to have the 72 ppi. But you have to keep in mind that, that there, are, there are times when you want to lower the resolution to say file size. Maybe you have greater than 72. But in general, you don't want to go any lower than 72 because you are going to see quality loss in your, in your displayed image. Now, print resolution is also important, and it's also completely different than web resolution. In print resolution, we in general say that 300 ppi um, is the standard printing resolution. And if you prep your images at 300 ppi, that when you output the image via your, your chosen printing process or method, that the image will look nice. And we say that because it's a general slider. There's actually a range of resolutions that would be appropriate. And so for our class, I'm just gonna say, go ahead and prep the image at 300 PPI because when in doubt, that would be okay. But there's this other form of resolution called LPI. It uh, stands for lines per inch and it describes the frequency of halftone dots in a particular printing process or that a particular printing process can output or print. And the more LPI we can have, or the, the, the more lines of halftone dots we can print per inch, the higher the image quality. But if we have a printing process that cannot output very many LPI, we don't need to have a higher resolution like 300. And so if we talk about desktop inkjet printers, they in general use uh, 240 to 300 PPI as their default because there's a formula you can use to calculate that. And so the LPI that's being output may not require anything higher than 240 PPI for your resolution. Commercial printing presses have specific formulas that you can use. And so taking LPI into consideration, grayscale images use a formula of one and a half times whatever the LPI is of your output device. And so if I'm printing this, on a, um, a newspaper printer, if it prints really fast, it's going to have lower image quality, I might only need to have 200 ppi because the LPI that's possible for the output device might only be 75 or whatever one and a half times something equals 200 would be. And so for grayscale images, you don't have to have as many pixels in your, in your image. Um, for color images that are going to be output on a commercial printing press, we generally do two times the LPI. And so if the LPI for the printing press is 133, if you did two times LPI, it would be 266 pixels per inch, which for most printing processes is actually perfectly okay. So you would need an image that has 266 pixels for every one inch. Uh, with that in mind, there are some printing processes that have a higher LPI. Maybe it has 175 LPI. And so when you do two times that, you're gonna have an image that's much higher than the 260 that you just calculated for the baseline of 133 LPI. Now I know that that's confusing and the more we cover it, the more it's going to make sense. For our class, you're gonna output your images to the web when you export. And you're also going to print on a desktop inkjet photo printer. And so for the printer that we use in our classroom, you can prep your images for 240 PPI. However, if you look at all those, those values I just gave you, if you prepped all of your images at 300 PPI, you would have more than enough pixels for every one of those options. And so if you wanted to prep them all as 300, the worst case scenario you'd have is that you have too many pixels and you'd have to downsample when it's time to output. So I said before that some printing processes have higher LPI, like gravure printing is a commercial um, version of intaglio printing, if you've ever heard of that. It has a higher uh, LPI than other printing processes. And so when you prep your images for that and you do one and a half times LPI for a grayscale image or two times LPI for a color image, the LPI might start out being higher and so your resolution might be higher. I get students all the time that say, oh, well, you know, I was told that this printer can output 600 resolution, uh, 600 PPI, DPI, if you want to use them interchangeably resolution. Um, that means that whatever LPI, lines per inch that their printing process can output, is much higher than the default for commercial offset lithography printing. Other, um, other printing processes have lower, like screen printing has way lower LPI than other printing processes. And so you might only need to prep an image to 150 or 200 resolution for screen printing. Now, just like we talked about the file size and the image quality for web resolution, it's also important for print. But unlike web resolution, 
with printing, we want to keep as much data as possible. We want to have the largest file size possible without exceeding what we need. And so the same idea applies except for our ideal resolution is not 72. For printing, it's going to be 300 ppi. And so anything above 300, 450, 600, 900, you're creating larger file sizes, but you're not really seeing any image quality um, increase, right? They, all these images on the screen look the same, even though they have distinctly different resolutions. And so we want to keep big files. We want to keep 300 resolution files. But you do not want to send a printer or share files with somebody that have 900 resolution if the output method that they're choosing to use isn't capable of outputting that resolution. And so keep big files, but don't keep them larger than you need. Now the same thing happens with print resolution as happens with web. If you go below the desired or the ideal resolution for your output device, you're going to have noticeable image quality loss. And so on the screen here, you have the default of 300 ppi resolution on screen. I'm looking at the image here. And anything below that, you start to see noticeable image quality loss. Now, this range is going to be different for each output method. So we said that back here, that um, usually grayscale images are about 200 resolution. And so the best image you're going to see is going to be 200 resolution, and anything below 200, you'll start to see noticeable quality loss. So keep that in mind.